Good lordy. Disarm it. Turtle and then rearm. Oh, okay. Right side, right side. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Yay, okay, then rearm. That was a lot more successful. Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm TJ and this is Ian. And today we're gonna to talk about, well, turtle mode. It's, what is it? Flip over after crash mode. Turtle mode. <laughs> it's in the system, I think that's actually what it says when you go to turn it on, but everybody calls it turtle mode. And what it is, is while you're flying, or better yet, why don't you explain it? Well, basically, uh, it allows you to get back up after you've crashed. So if you go and hit a gate, or you hit a tree or you hit anything essentially and you land upside down, you can flip a switch on your transmitter and spool up only a select certain props and flop yourself back over and then continue on. Instead of just turtle mode where it flips you back over, what else is included whenever you do the update? Well, uh, now with uh, Release Candidate 5, you can tone your motors. Um, they'll vibrate and twitch from the ESC as a beeper function. Um, if you don't have a beeper or you don't want to pay so for they one, actually they'll, yep, and make they'll, noise. Tone, they'll, they'll tone and uh, they'll twitch and it'll be loud enough you'll be able to hear it. So it's pretty it. much like whenever you start your quad up, you exactly. hear those noises from your ESCs. Mm -hmm. So it's just making those noises. Yep. Will it hurt your motors if your props are like, if it's stuck upside down and you can't turtle mode it, will it hurt it? Uh, yes, you can burn out ESCs right. uh, if your motors are bound up um, and you're trying to spin them. Um, the idea is, you know, proceed with caution. Um, but usually when you're in the FPV camera, mm -hmm. you can kind of see and tell that there's one side that is higher than the other or the front's higher than the other. Or maybe your, your nose is in the ground and the backs, you know, okay. are, are out. You can spin just those props. And then the same free. thing, if you're using it as a beeper, you don't want to just turn it on and leave it on for five minutes. Actually, wanna... the beeper function should be good for really? about as long as you need it to. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't you show us how to get this done? All right. So the first step will be to go into our Google Chrome open up the apps, select Betaflight. We'll go into our firmware flasher tab. And then this is where we're going to want to click on this little tab that says show unstable releases. Now, it's unstable, does that mean I don't want to use it? <laughs> Not necessarily, that just means that yeah. they're working on it and okay. that they are possibly working on some improvements. You may not have the most up-to-date, but they're, it's, it's in the revision process. So it's just saying that the turtle mode as it is now is just pretty much being tested. Correct. And so if you do the unstable releases, just be aware that it may have some effects that you don't want to see. But at this point of us making this video, this release is working out pretty well for everybody. Yeah, it's been fairly stable for me cool. and for a lot of others. So then what we'll want to do is we will want to select the board that we're using, which in our case, we're using the Lux V2 Race mm -hmm. from Lumineer. Then we'll choose the firmware, and the firmware we're going to want to select is 3.2 RC5. That's Release Candidate okay. 5. So Release Candidate just means that's what they made. Right. It's their now. fifth revision. They've cool. had a, a fourth, but the fifth is obviously better than the fourth. <laughs> so we'll go with Release Candidate 5. All right. We will load our firmware online. This you will want to be connected to the internet for. Now while it's loading here... We want to have no reboot sequence and full chip erase? Correct. So okay. we're going to want to erase any uh, previous data that's been on the board previously. And then we don't want to reboot it. Uh, we want to manually connect ourselves. Cool. So then we're going to want to go ahead and plug in our quad. Luckily with the Lux V2, we have a bootloader button. Um, some other flight controllers may be two pads you may have to jumper. Um, or it may even be as simple as being able to go into the uh, CLI interface in Betaflight and just typing in DFU and it will then go into a DFU mode. Um, in this case we have a very easy button so we'll be pressing that button while we're going ahead and plugging in the USB simultaneously. That will get us in a mode called DFU which we see up here in the top corner. Then what we'll want to do is flash our firmware. Right now it's erasing the data that was previously on the board and then it will go ahead and flash, and then it will verify our flash. And while it's flashing here, one thing that I've done, because you know, obviously here we flash a lot of boards. Yes. So for me, 
it's hard for me to hold the quad and then plug it in depending on where the button is. Correct. So I tend to leave it plugged into the flight controller, hold the button, and then plug it into the computer. Yeah, that's another that's really easy way to do it. Different ways to do it. Looks All like right. we're successful. So we have a successful flash there. We so you just unplug it and plug it back in. Go ahead and unplug it. Then we're going to want to go ahead and plug it right back in, like you said. And then we're going to connect. And then this is where we'll have our average flight controller set up. We can calibrate our accelerometer here if we're using one. You know, reset any settings back to defaults if we would like. Um, for instance, in ports here, this is where we have our modes for what receiver we're using. In our case, mm -hmm. so we're going to need to be on UART4. We will save and reboot. That's for your receiver? That's for our receiver. In our case, we're using a Spectrum Autobind serial receiver. Then we'll go ahead and configuration. Now to get the flip over after crash mode or the D-Shot ESC tones for the beeper. You, <coughs> Cough turtle mode. <coughs> turtle <Sorry>. mode. <laughs> you uh, you will need to be running a D-Shot D -shot, um, ESC protocol. It doesn't matter if it's D-Shot uh, 150, 300, 600, or 1200. It needs to be digital shot. So we're going to go ahead and do 600 because our ESCs are capable of that. Cool. Come down here and select our correct receiver provider, which is Spectrum 2048. And some cool uh, added features of Betaflight 3.2, we have some things such as dynamic filters, anti-gravity. Uh, a dynamic filter is basically a notch filter that's always uh, varying to what the copter senses it needs, which is a very, very, very helpful if you like to fly and don't always want to change your props. So I like to enable those hmm. right off the bat. So pretty much if we have a bent prop, it'll yeah. smooth it out. It'll, it'll notice the frequency and then add the filter there when it's needed while okay. flying. So now, now we're getting into something where we may need another video. <laughs> Just beta 5.2 <laughs> yeah. all together. I also like to select air mode. Mm -hmm. Makes it uh, fly a little bit better, in my opinion. All right, so to get turtle mode or flip over after crash mode working properly, uh, we are going to have to set some things in the CLI to get it to work if you like to run the accelerometer. So we're going to have to set a small angle command that will allow us to basically arm the quad in any orientation. So pretty much what it does is like if you're in flying self level mode or horizon mode or anything where the accelerometer helps you fly you need to be able to arm it upside down and if the accelerometer is on and you do not do this if the quad is upside down or at a angle that it doesn't feel that is completely flat or near flat mm -hmm. and you try to arm it it's not going to arm okay. so by doing this you can either a disable your accelerometer which if you want to self-level modes you can't do or b you come in a cli like ian's doing now and what, what do you right. have typed in so there? So what we're going to want to type into our CLI is set space small underscore angle space equals space 180. And that's basically saying that we'll be able to have our quad uh, 180 degrees mm -hmm. from what should be upright and we'll be able to arm it. And awesome. it'll get that entire spectrum. So then we want to enter and then we must type save and then enter again after entering save in the cli it will disconnect your flight controller and reboot your board and then now we are ready for the next step then i will go ahead and come into our receiver we are using a spectrum receiver so we'll have to go down to the spectrum grapner jr option go ahead and save that channel map then we will want to come into modes and set up our modes. It's very really important to have a transmitter on and bound to your quad at this time. What I like to do is disconnect because this is an auto bind that's been powered. We'll disconnect it and then reconnect it and that will reprovide power to the to the receiver. So now we are connected. Now we can go here back into the receiver tab and see that everything is responding as it should. And then this is also where you like to see uh, which switches are on which auxiliary channels. So for instance, it looks like we have our switch F over here is auxiliary one. 
I believe switch A is aux 3 and then auxiliary 2 we have on C so well with those three we can be we can go to the modes tab now and set up our arm switches our beeper switches and our flip over after crash or turtle mode switch thank you <laughs> so for our arm switch we're going to want that to be on TJ would like his on aux 1 and notice he said TJ <laughs> got him setting us up on my quad yep so we get the you like to uh, switch your switch in the position that it is armed and then we'll go ahead and take this slider here slide it over so that way our little receiver tab is inside the value awesome then we go and scroll down and then we'll go ahead here into the beeper section and I believe you would like that three. on yes that was aux 3 and we'll just slide it over. Oh, down. See, we got to keep him in line. All right, we'll slide that down. <laughs> All right, perfect. And then our last step is to come into here where we have flip over after crash D shot. It's a D shot only is what that okay. is like to says after that. Um, basically saying you can't run it multi shot or one shot or the new pro shot, I believe. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add that range. That was auxiliary two. And for, thank you. You're welcome. We'll slide that on over. And then you also want to hit save. Always save any changes you ever do. I always forget that. Even now when I work on the quad, I always forget to hit save on this screen. And then I go outside the test fly and it don't wanna fly. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Save. And now we will disconnect from beta flight. And now we will update the ESCs. Oh wow, yeah, so you gotta put the D shot on the ESC, right? Mm -hmm. Now on this quad we're using, as he said, a Lux version 2 was the flight controller. Now the ESC is a 4-in-1 ESC made by T-Motor, which they're a 35 amp. And just in these small racing rigs, I like to use the 4-in-1, they're just so compact. And it makes the build really, really easy. If you're building at home on your own, um, the 4-in-1 ESC also doubles as a power distribution board as well. Mm. So you can just solder your XC60 right onto that. Nice. So what we'll do to update our ESCs now is we'll go ahead into Chrome again. We'll open up our apps. We're gonna to want to have BL Heli Configurator open. We'll go ahead and make that full screen so we can see everything. Now this is where you're definitely gonna to wanna to have your props taken off. Um, if you didn't already take them off before, which you should have, please take them off now for sure. We're going to be plugging in the battery. Wait for the tones to finish then connect. We're gonna go down to this tab here and read the setup. Now we're gonna to have to flash the firmware, uh, D-Shot firmware, onto these ESCs. So we'll go down to this tab here that says flash all. Never change this num this uh, value right here. That is the type of ESC and the BL Heli configurator will automatically sense which ESC you're using. So that way you don't have to mess it up. Cool. But we'll go down here and select the version and the version we're gonna need is 16.67 RC, it's BL Heli Multi-Shot. It says BL Heli Multi-Shot, but it is the D-Shot command um, release candidate. So it's just the newest one? Correct, the very okay. newest one. And even though it don't say D-Shot, because the one under it did say D-Shot. Yes, it's a little confusing. So just get the newest DSC firmware out. Exactly. All right. And then we'll go ahead and flash. And then up here, it'll give us um, status information right now. It's mm -hmm. flashing the S1. We also have a status bar as well right here. Cool. Um, while it's doing that, I also, there's a couple other things here in the common parameters that I like to change just to make it a little bit easier on people. Mm -hmm. I usually tend to do this with the Gremlins and even with my full size five inch quads. Um, I like to go ahead and change the beacon delay from 10 minutes to five minutes. And what that does is if your quadcopter happens to be sitting in a field somewhere and it's not disarmed, it's not armed, um, and it's just sitting there disarmed it will kind of have an internal timer and in this case it will wait five minutes until the ESCs will start to tone and so it'll do that pretty automatically. Pretty much a, like a beeper without like having, the beeper to, okay. without See, having cool. to enable it. So it'll automatically do that but I like to set it to five minutes instead of ten mm -hmm. because it seems like when we're out in the field looking for a quad and we're panicking yeah. it seems to be like around that little bit after five minute time we give up. So yeah. uh, if we can just shorten that time and you're never really sitting on the line or sitting down armed or right. disarm for five minutes at a time anyway. So I like to set that. It looks like we are flashing as completed. 
will go and anytime you make any changes in parameters or anytime you reverse directions, you always want to write that setup as like our save button. Wait for everything to be done. Reading setup, setup is finished. We'll go ahead and disconnect. And there's one final step before we go out and fly. We want to double check our motor direction and make sure everything is spinning the proper way. Now with D-Shot, it is not required to calibrate the motors. So we'll just go ahead and double check that they are spinning the right way. Go in here. Also, remember to click the, I understand that I have removed the propellers because we have removed our propellers. And then I'll like to go up here on the master slider and just get the motors spinning and make sure that they're spinning the right way. All right, let's go in. So when you're looking at the quad like that, the bottom right is clockwise. Correct. And that's just opposite. So bottom right is clockwise, top left is clockwise, counterclockwise, top right, and counterclockwise, bottom left. Exactly. I like to think the opposing motor is always going the same. So nice. these guys always go this way and these guys always rock that way unless you're running reverse prop, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're good. So we can disconnect, turn everything Correct. off. We will go ahead and put in. some props on and then you can go outside and show me how turtle mode actually works. Yes. All right, now that you got everything set up, you got the turtle mode, you have the, the nice fancy beepers yep. and all the fun stuff. We're ready to test this out. Oh yeah. And pretty much the only thing we're going to do to test it out is put it on the ground. Ian will flip it around a little bit and then I, I kind of want to get it stuck on the roof. Right. <laughs> All right, so now that we're upside down, we're going to make sure we're disarmed. We're going to enable our, tur our turtle mode. Then we will go ahead and rearm. Notice which props are exposed the most and then push in that direction. In this case, it's the front props, so we'll push forward. Go slow slowly with it and stop. Disarm, disable turtle mode, rearm, continue on. Dude, I just do come back over here, do do half a roll and disarm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, that's one way to get it. We're so, gonna have to get new shingles. Yeah. So <laughs> normally in this situation, we would have to be getting the roof, and then I would be climbing on the roof. I like how you said that because how many times have I had you get on the roof to get my squad? Probably two or three <laughs> times already. But now we can. Dude, that's turtle just mode. It. So awesome. So if you don't have an actual beeper installed, you can uh, select it in the beeper modes. And basically what it'll allow you to do is use your motors as a beeper. So what we'll do is we'll hit this. And as you can hear off in the distance, the ESCs are toning. That's awesome. I like how we have the regular beeper plus the motors, so it makes like a cool sound. Mm -hmm. Man, I appreciate it. Yeah, this no is problem. actually your first real episode, huh? Yep been in vlogs and mm -hmm. so it's kind of funny we were talking earlier the first one i was ever kind of a co-host in was learning how to do air mode <laughs> this is about making friends and for the first time in nine years i have friends <laughs> and now we're flipping quads that are upside down it's it's crazy how far this stuff comes and yeah you know it's been only a little over a year yeah the mini quad industry moves so fast <laughs> yeah right so anyway like i said hope you learned something turtle mode if you don't have it in your race you might want to get it and uh, other than that, the beeper is a great function. Yep. And dude, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, no problem. Look forward to the next thing you teach me. Heck yeah. There'll be more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyway, guys, we do four or five episodes a week. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Click the little bell beside that because you have to in order to get notifications now. So appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time.